Um, I'm about to talk about um, social serious games. Uh, I'm not going to present you a case study because this is something that is extremely new. Uh, we are in the process of developing uh, two of them. Uh, so I'm just beginning to explain how you can use social mm, network features to put that into games. So this is the purpose of my talk. So the first thing is when I'm going to introduce our vision in Succubus, I will present my company, of course, of serious games, and um, how you can measure uh, its performance and how you use serious games for, uh, from, from the gamer point of view. Secondly, I will uh, talk about social games uh, and specifically games on social networks. So these are not games that have social features uh, like in real life social stuff, but in social networks. Uh, we'll go over the key performances indicators too, and you'll see that they are very different. And we'll talk about the specific gameplay mechanics of these uh, social network games. And finally, we'll go for what we can expect from those social serious games, and how it could help uh, for uh, a lot of things uh, for serious games. So very briefly about me, I'm the founder of a company that is called Succubus Interactive. It's a French company. It's actually the French pioneers company. We created our first serious game in 2002. It was more than 10 years ago. It was the, the year uh, I founded the company. And uh, since then we had many, many dozens and actually we're uh, almost to 100. Uh, we, we just passed 100 games for B2B. So these are other games, serious games. Uh, mostly serious games, but, but uh, we have all, all, all the games uh, uh, for uh, promotion. Uh, we have kind of big accounts in France, uh, Ministry of Industry, Electricité de France. Electricité de France is a company that is providing electrical power to uh, each and every household. And finally, we won uh, kind of a few awards. We just won one in a Serious Game Expo. Uh, uh, again, it was the second time, so we won 2010-2012, and we won in Easier Tools 2 for training game. And the second expertise uh, of my company is not uh, only serious game, but it's social games. Uh, not, not serious games, fun games on social networks. So that's why we use uh, uh, social uh, networks features inside serious games. And we're, uh, from my knowing, the only company in France using Facebook for serious gaming. So let's go very briefly about what is a serious game in this talk, at least. Uh, serious game, uh, I'm talking about games that uh, have a message and that are uh, trying to transmit that message uh, from the game developers to the players. So it's to make the message more enjoyable, uh, easier to understand, more persuasive. I wanted to go for demos, but uh, uh, I've been told but there's, there's no time for that. That's again about dangers of binge drinking. It's freely available online, so you can just log in and it's even translated into English. Um, it also won a prize last week in Genoa. <laughs> uh, a, few, uh, a few of you were there. Uh, we have other uh, examples. This is a game we made for the Ministry of Industry. Uh, this is to to let people uh, know what kind of proficiencies they should have before creating their own company. And this one was made for Electricité de France. It's to train people to uh, act uh, with uh, security measures, uh, not to be shocked or not to get other people shocked. So this is the kind of games we make. So basically, we define uh, in France, mostly, serious game with only three applications. And you'll see that games for health specifically is not one of them. So the first uh, uh, category is formation and evaluation assessment. Uh, know how people uh, successfully or not play the game. Uh, we are beginning to split that in two uh, because more and more games are only about assessment and not training. So the aim is to assess people to know what they know and what they don't so that you can uh, lead them to uh, training courses afterwards. The second uh, application is uh, information or sensibilization. Uh, that's basically well for mass audience. Uh, and the third one is promotion and marketing. We won't be talking too much about that one uh, because it's, it's less uh, in the focus, even though it's very good for uh, social games. So 
the key performances indicators. Uh, the first one is, so we have to, to, to remember these this three categories because uh, it will be very uh, uh, important for the, 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 the rest of the presentation. So the first one is about understanding and memorizing. Of course, it's very well fitted to training games. Uh, although, sorry to come back again. This is not exclusive. You can mix uh, uh, two or even three of those components inside uh, 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 one game. So the first uh, KPI is, is about understanding and memorizing. How can you know if people actually uh, received your message? Uh, then you just do a basic assessment and you uh, take a group A, you have them play the serious game, you have a group B, they don't play, then you assess separately each other and you do A-B testing and you see if one is better than the other. This is very basic KPI, but it actually works quite well. Uh, the second uh, KPI that's very interesting on serious games is audience. How many people actually play the game? Uh, most of the time people focus on the first KPI and just say, is my game actually working or not? Uh, something that is maybe more interesting is how many people actually played your game? This is something that is very interesting and we have small uh, sub-categories uh, into this KPI that we'll just briefly go over after. And finally, the third KPI is how persuasive is your game? So this is very difficult to get data on behavioral change. As instance, we made a game for um, the city of Nantes, for the, the dangers of binge drinking. Uh, we have major issues in Nantes, Nantes is, is, my, is my hometown, and uh, they had that perfect idea to put all the bars in the middle of the town on an, an island. This is quite near to the city center, but there's no people living there, so it's very good for noise. Um, and it's also very, very good because there's only one road to go and one road to come. So they can have police uh, controls uh, all over, so driving and drinking, it was perfect. The thing is, they just did not click that it's an island, it's surrounded by water. For the youngs, they actually dived into the water to show their friends that they could swim even if they were wasted. So six dived, two never came out of the water. So there was like a big, big problem saying that, yeah, okay, the politics, they put all the bars on an island. How, how stupid was that? So they wanted to communicate on that. So they had major, major uh, communication campaign with the game inside that so that they could talk to youngs. And on that game, uh, we, we had a very interesting KPI. Uh, before, they had a website. On this website, you had all the, the things, pedagogical stuff you needed to know. And uh, such as, if you drink, you can remember what you did. If you drink, you can get really ridiculous. Or you can even get naked, all that kind of stuff. So what people did, actually what we did in my company, uh, when we f were first asked to develop that game is to put some check boxes, say, yes, I did that, yes, that one too. So it was not really working as, as they expected. So <laughs> To get back to that point, it's very hard to get data on behavioral change. How do you know if people actually stopped drinking or just lowered their drinking? It's very difficult to do uh, such kind of, of uh, measurement. So telling my game is good because now people drink less and look, they drink like 2% less. It's, you can't do that. It's very difficult. So, but what you can do is measure the time of exposure in front of the message. So on that website, people tended to have an average time of view of one minute and a half. So that's very low. <laughs> one minute and a half. That's the time people spent on that website before going uh, out. By using our game, we're between 20 and 25 minutes average. That's the time people stay on the website in front of that message. So that's a very good KPI. If you don't get that message better from the developers or from the pedagogical expert to the player or to the learner, well, at least you can know that you have the people longer in front of you. So that's very interesting. So these are our basic KPIs, and this is what we strive for. We try to uh, have uh, games that perform well in these three things. So, I wanted to have this slide to explain what is serial, serious gaming. We are not pedagogical experts in my company. We are actually game developers. As I told you, we make serious games and social games. So, our expertise is about video game development, not really about the serious stuff in that. 
uh, even though we've been doing that for 10 years. So one thing that is very important to understand is that serial, serious gaming is casual gaming. You don't make these games for hardcore gamers. You make these games for casual gamers, people that maybe don't even want to play your game. They're just here because strolling around on the internet or seeing this from a friend's laptop or whatever. So what is a casual game? Um, for a casual game, there are many things very important to understand. As instance, in France, it's the first uh, entertainment. It's above watching uh, TV. So this is something that, even if it's casual, it's very widespread. But you just don't address those people the same way as you do with games that they buy, download, and install. Uh, <clears throat> we have 10 million players that play every day on a population of 60 million. So it's one-sixth of the population just play every day. That's huge. But this is casual gaming. This is not normal gaming. 73% of our French population play online games. So basically, I'm going to the point. <laughs> uh, we have two-thirds of major accounts in France, uh, oh, sorry, that's in Europe, uh, that have or are in the process of developing a serious game. So, um, and one, it's the number of times a serious game tends to be played. So when knowing this, you can understand that you're not developing a common game. It's a very different kind of game. It's a casual game that will be played once, and it should be played, of course, for free. Social game. Let's switch to a completely different approach. It's really very different. What is the scope of a social game, and what do I call a social game? So, this is a video game using social networks features, such as play with your friends, okay? So the S social word will be misused in this conference a lot because I'm not talking of games that will enhance your social way of being with other people. It's social network games. So the metrics of these games are very different from what we've seen before. I was talking about the KPIs of a serious game and trying to understand how a developer <coughs> wants to go for the best thing possible for a serious game. So let's look at what a developer is going to do when he's doing a social game. The first thing, he's going for acquisition. It's, we talk about monthly users. Uh, this is how many people actually try your game. So you have to remember that a social game is always free to play. And then, the second metric, and you see this is shrinking, is the retention. How many people that played your games once are logging back again and actually playing games on a daily basis? This is called engagement, fidelization, retention. And the third metric is monetization. This is a free-to-play game. You have to make money. You were not funded to develop that game. You developed it on your own, or you got money from an investor, but he's expecting a return on invest. So how do you give that uh, ROI? So you have to monetize. You have to get money from your players. And that's all. These are the metrics of a social game. These metrics are actually very easy. Acquisition, no problem. You just pay. Just put some money, 50 cents, uh, for one people that will come and try your game. Very easy. Monetization is actually today something that is very easy to. If you, if you are into the game development business, just ripping some features out of your game and letting players use them only if they pay a small amount of money is something quite easy to do. So actually the big black magic is about retention. How do you, as a game developer, make a good game uh, on a social network. It's when you have people that come and play your game on a daily basis. So that's how you make a good game. And this one is the very, very hard part. And let me tell you that we strive to have a very, very high percentage of uh, DAU uh, divided by MAU. Uh, so 20% is a very good number as instance. It means one people over five come back and play your game. So. Let's talk about those game mechanics from social networks. Now that we know that we're looking for that, there are two game mechanics uh, that are very important. The first one is about viralization. So I told you that 
Acquisition was easy. You just have to pay. Just pay. And you'll get users coming and try your game by advertisement. Well, when you're using viralization, um, you can use these social network features such as invites or requests. How many people have a Facebook account? Please. Okay, let's do it the other way. How many people don't use Facebook here? I can see two. <laughs> okay, that's oh, three. That's a high percentage. So all of you have already seen in your live feeds invites to come and play the game and maybe uh, uh, use your, maf your mafia so that you can mug some people or just help people grow chickens and plant herbs and stuff. So that's, these are the invites. Please come and help me play that game. Well, actually, how many people in here play Facebook games or actually try Facebook games? Oh, my God. Almost as many as people that don't have, yeah, as many as people that don't have uh, Facebook accounts. Okay, so these uh, uh, features uh, are something that most of you know. DeFi is something very new. How can you uh, DeFi people? Like, I have to urge Ben, that's it. Okay, I will go quicker. Um, how, how can you DeFi people when you're playing player versus player? So uh, I make uh, a game. Uh, I sent you the game I just made, the, the, and then you try to beat me. This is asynchronous DeFi. And Open Graph is the new stuff on Facebook. It's how you can publish everything that's happening in your game. You publish to the graph of Facebook, and instead of showing on everyone's live feed, Facebook will have uh, um, his the job of Facebook actually is to filter only the relevant information for you. So the DeFi application that is very well known at the moment is called Song Pop. Song Pop is a music quiz. You have to guess some music very quickly, so you have like 10 seconds of the music and you have four choices and you click on the one that, the, 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 that you think is the good one. And you play that on your side, you send him to the other people and he has to do the same thing but quicker than you. And he wins or he loses. So you publish everything in Open Graph. In Open Graph you publish, I logged in, I play that game, I guess this song, I won, <laughs> I want to get these people. Everything gets published and you can access all this information. Facebook is filtering so that not all of your friends see everything. Only the ones that are actually playing song pop and maybe that guess the same song as you. So viralization can help uh, lowering the cost of acquisition. And so the black magic is about engagement. How do you get people to log back uh, every day? So engagement, uh, there is three things to do. Macro gameplay, so you have content in your game, just unlock it progressively. Don't give everything away right now. And have people uh, let them play to get more unlockable content and collect items. This is the opposite to micro gameplay. This is very difficult to pronounce it for a French guy, micro and macro. Uh, the micro gameplay is when you play Tetris, you're making lines. When you drive a car, you're turning left or right. Well, the macro gameplay is just how you will reach new levels and new kind of stuff. So that's what's around the micro gameplay. The second game mechanic is community management. It's actually not really a, a gameplay mechanic, but what the point in that is having some people listen to the community and, and um, uh, understand what they're looking for in your game. So game is not a product anymore, it becomes a service. And in that service you will release new content, new rules, make the game evolve on a daily or weekly basis. This is very important to understand that for social games, once you release the first version online of your game, you're not finished, you're actually beginning to work. And that's, that's something that is extremely important if you want your community to come back and play the game each day, is to have them uh, correctly engaged by adding content and listening to them. And finally, the third point is social status. Uh, social status means you need to be able to talk to people and let them know that you actually succeeded in the game. You killed the boss, you got that brand new plus five sword, or you just managed to grow a huge tree uh, that's 10 meters high. So th these are uh, the social game uh, specific game mechanics. This was a slide about numbers for advert gaming, uh, saying that you can have millions of people, so the acquisition channel is actually working quite well. So let me finish by talking about social serious games. So there are two cases. Either you're addressing mass audience, so that means each and every one of us, either you're addressing corporate training or educational training. <coughs> so for that first uh, audience, mass audience, 
you have to understand that you're not doing a serious game anymore. You're rather really doing a social game. Um, in that kind of games, social games, but with serious features inside, what you will strive for is socialization. It's not engagement anymore. Uh, retention still is very interesting, but now what you want to do is you want to let the people socialize at most so that they can actually claim, they can brag that they know more than others. Social status is something really important, I told you. And in, in, in serious, social serious gaming, this is really the point you want to achieve when you're targeting mass audience. And finally, of course, the business model is free to play. But this time, without any monetization, how do you want people that are casual gamers, that are not here to entertain themselves, that just stumble the post? Remember, serious gaming is casual gaming. You will not get money from them. So business model on this kind of games is very difficult because you need to have funds at the beginning to develop the game, and then you need to maintain the game. As I told you, uh, remember the previous slide, you only beginning to work. So business model is very difficult because you won't get a lot of money from people who are at least in France and even in Europe. And um, in Asia, in North America, it might be different. But really, monetization uh, is, 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 is no go for this kind of game. And finally, for corporations or educations, um, more and more you have uh, social networks in internet on those companies. And they have social features. Uh, it's getting more and more famous in big companies. Uh, learning management system are getting a lot of social features too. Now you can add friends, you can send them messages, you can just log them and compare um, on, on these learning courses if you did better than them. So what we are doing, we're actually doing uh, one of those social service games for mass audience and one for corporate. So um, the new type of game mechanics that you can just add in, so these are really expectations, I'm not giving you uh, uh, um, a miracle recipe. <laughs> this is very, very new. Uh, even social, social gaming is very new, so uh, social service games are even brand new. Uh, so the new type of game mechanics you can, you can have is now that you have players that are connected at the same time, so you can go for multiplayer real-time serious gaming. This is something that's already been done, but never without someone that is actually the game master. So when you do real-time multiplayer serious gaming, people log in together, but there's one that is actually the teacher. So it's, it's not really uh, scalable to, to bigger audiences. And it's still almost like you had people connected, uh, well, in the same room. So the other thing is peer-to-peer -peer knowledge sharing. Uh, there is a publication, I never remember which one, I really have to add it in that, in, in that talk, that says that the best way for people to learn is when one of their peer actually is teaching them. Not the teacher himself, but one of the peers, one of the other students. Uh, you can leverage that with social serious games inside company because you will have three, four people from the same group, from the same district in the company that will get that learning course, and they will talk uh, to each other, and they will actually get better and better. One point I did not insist on, uh, when you play a serious game, you play once. When you play a social game, you play a little uh, 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 each day. So the point is, uh, the good thing about social serious game is that you can play a little each day, not as before where you play once and you just forgot about it. So peer-to-peer -peer knowledge sharing is something that will be really one minute. <laughs> Just one last slide after. Peer-to-peer uh, -peer knowledge sharing is really something that, 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 that you want to achieve. And finally, the good old bragging always around you. It let people say that they finished the game, that they actually got a high score, all that kind of stuff. Let them publish. So what you should strive for. This is my last slide. Uh, so uh, I'm going to go over these three KPIs, um, understanding, memorizing, uh, it should be of course raised. It should be raised if you manage to have peer-to-peer -peer knowledge sharing. If not, then you're basically doing a serious game, even with social features. But if you get peer-to-peer -peer knowledge sharing, you, will, uh, you should raise a lot uh, your uh, understanding and memorizing of, uh, of the game, of the pedagogical content. Basically, you can expect an audience to grow by at least two and can get up to 10. That's what we did for small serious game. Uh, it was basically 1,000 people playing the game. 
for this, uh, it's a company that created a game each year. Each year they had 1,000 people playing the game. We put it on Facebook and added some viral, viral um, game mechanics inside. We went up to 10,000 for the same price. So this is really what you can expect and the, the multiply by two is really the minimum you should expect. Uh, so you, you, you raise your audience by that too. And finally, the last KPI, it's about how persuasive your game should be. Remember, we talked about time spent and very difficult to get data on behavioral change. Well, uh, the gameplay retention mechanics, where you log in each day, uh, just a little bit, tends to multiply by 10 the time you spent in front of the game. So this is really the uh, metrics we try to achieve with social service games.